Good afternoon. I am R.V. Washington, the Deputy Director for the Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Programs, led by our distinguished director, Mr. Jimmy Smith. On behalf of OSBP, we thank you for joining us today. We started this webinar series as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic as a way to continue outreach, but received such rave reviews, we decided to keep it going, committing to hosting at least three webinars a month. The Department of Navy recognizes small businesses are the catalyst of innovation, and we use this platform as a way to attract new business partners. You can view previously recorded events on our website under the Outreach tab in Past Events or visit our YouTube channel. I would also like to direct you to our website at www.secnav.navy.mil backslash small business where you can find a wealth of information, including our Don OSBP operations plan, locate your small business professional, and find information on how to do business with the Don, including the command's long range acquisition forecast. To stay current on Don OSBP upcoming events, you can register for our mailing list on the homepage of our website. To stay connected about upcoming industry days, commands, outreach, and in general, what's happening across the Department of the Navy and Marine Corps, I also encourage you to connect with us on social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I hope you seize the opportunity to ask questions using our Q&A feature on this platform. And today, we have a dynamic speaker from the Department of Homeland Security. Ms. Darlene Bullock, was appointed as the director of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Utilization in January of 2020. She also served as the acting OSDABU director in June 2019 and the OSDABU deputy director in June 2015. Ms. Bullock is responsible for implementing the department's small business procurement programs across DHS's $18 billion procurement operation, which operates approximately $6 billion each year to small business. With over 28 years of experience in procurement, federal assistance, and acquisitions management, Ms. Bullock has led leadership positions, has held leadership positions at several federal and local agencies, including DHS, U.S. Agency for International Development, U.S. Department of Commerce, the District of Columbia Government, and the United States Army. So we are happy to have Ms. Bullock join us today. And thank you, ma'am, over to you. Well, thank you, Arvis, and thank you, Destiny, for uh, uh, helping out today and having me. And thank you to Jimmy for having me. I, like I was saying before, I love to come to uh, speak to companies that may not do business with DHS. So we're always trying to, you know, steal companies from other agencies or what have you. So um, uh, I appreciate you having me today. And, and I, the way I kind of talk usually is through like a conversation. So if you have any questions that you wanna ask that you know aren't spe too specific in nature about any particular contracting actions that DHS is working on, any of the information you want clear, just let me know. So um, I think we can get started. So um, what I wanna talk about today is you know how the department is structured a bit in the procurement entities. What do we buy? Uh, what does our small business function do? You know, what is the spin? You know, what is the socioeconomic spin of the department, um, et cetera? So, um, the next slide. You can go past this one too. So, DHS's mission. What is DHS's mission? Our mission is, you know, just what it says there. And how do you see that every day? Every day when you walk down the street, when you go to the airport, uh, when you're trying to. Uh, package delivery, when you're, uh, you know, at a football game, you know, when the world was open. Homeland Security is involved in every element of our lives to keep us safe, you know. So, you know, understanding that, you um, also know that, you know, there aren't occurrences, you know, other than things that we've seen lately because of uh, certain actions that you don't see where the homeland itself is uh, uh 
having any issues with attack or so forth because Homeland Security is on top of it all the time. So there are things that are working that, you know, many of us, all of us aren't aware of uh, uh, how active Homeland Security is. And our mission, even though we have a various amount of different components, we call them, various missions, but the one mission is to support the homeland, support you, me, and everyone traveling to the United States. So next slide. Now, these are some of the separate missions of, that are carried out by different components, I'll say. So as you see, counterterrorism is um, you know, probably the biggest one, along with cybersecurity, securing the borders, um, national economic security, preparedness, uh, you know, uh, reacting to disasters, which is what uh, FEMA is in, working with DOD uh, to do that right now with COVID. Um, and just champion the workforce, you know, you know, if you think about it, just like in small business, you know, what would that be if there weren't small businesses? What would Homeland be if we didn't have a strong workforce or we didn't, you know, our human resource piece, we didn't also uh, make sure that they were taken care of and et cetera. So that is also one of the strengths of uh, Homeland Security and one of our missions. Next slide. Now, what does DHS buy? A lot of people go, what, what, do, what do you all do over there? They kind of, I think the D word kind of thinks we're DOD, even though Coast Guard does have a piece of, uh, uh, becomes a DOD function in, 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 in certain times. But DHS buys a wide variety of things. Everything from computer, uh, large computer programs, computers themselves, to um, canines, to helicopters, to, I mean, just everything under the sun. So next slide, so I can show, or it represents, you know, a variety of the goods, uh, the largest spend. So I'll go with fiscal year 2019. So this just gives a, a representation of what, these are the final numbers, uh, final numbers um, uh, rounded up for fiscal year 19. So you can see where GHS, where we spend most of the money. Most of our money is spent in IT, like most agencies and uh, professional services. So we also spend a large amount of money in security and protection equipment. Um, we, part of Homeland Security is the Federal Protective Service. We buy aircraft, ships, and special vehicles, CBP, Coast Guard, uh, a lot of facilities and construction. You know, we do construct some buildings. A, lo a lot of times we get uh, companies, construction companies that come to us and say, oh, you know, how about our services? Homeland does not do a lot of a vertical build. Uh, we use core engineers and we use GSA for those things, but we do a lot of remodeling of existing facilities, particularly like, uh, let's say, FLETC, Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers location or Coast Guard uh, um, locations. A lot of travel, travel logistics, logistics and office management. So this is just a, a, a piece of what we do. It just, it just ranges from, you know, like they used to say, soup to nuts, everything we buy. Next slide. So these next slides are really just, just so uh, for information purposes, and I, it's important because a lot of times I'll have uh, uh, companies come to me and they aren't sure what, who is a part of Homeland, okay? So they'll say something like, they'll say Homeland in one piece and they say, oh, I, I wanna do work with FEMA. Well, that is part of Homeland Security. So these next few slides just take you through what offices are supported by Homeland, like the Office of Procurement Operations is a, a procurement office function, but out of that office is supported all of the Office of the Secretary offices, uh, Science and Technology Division, uh, CISA, uh, 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 let's see, DNDO, uh, well, no, they call it a uh, weapons of mass destruction office now. Oh, DNDO is the old word. That, that, that was around forever. So that office, CIO, um, headquarters CIO. So Office of Procurement Operations spends about $5.4 billion a year, fiscal year, uh, more or less. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower, but they support a wide variety. Federal Protective Service procurements are out of that office. So they do a wide variety of procurements at the headquarters level. And they're also responsible for issuing a lot of the DHS-wide procurements. Uh, ICE, for example, ICE, uh, 
uh, some of their uh, main services, security guard services, uh, IT services, medical translation interpretation services for um, uh, uh, some of the detention centers, et cetera. They spend about $4 billion a year. Next slide. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, they are part of Homeland Security. A lot of IT maintenance, a lot of work at the borders. You may hear a lot of uh, on the news about the border situation now, and you know, which affects some of the border contracts, et cetera. Um, um, they also buy a lot of aircraft engines, uh, cameras, different things to support the activities at the border. The U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Coast Guard has several missions. You know, they do everything from drug interdiction to ice breaking. Um, they do a lot of uh, ship building and repair. Sometimes we buy these huge cutters that are billions, a billion dollars at a time, half a billion dollars. They, again, they do construction and maintenance of their facilities, like I mentioned, uh, aircraft equipment, you know, uh, IT, they buy a, 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 a gamut of different things. And they are another one of the largest spenders in DHS, uh, 4.6. Now we'll say for fiscal year 19, uh, historically, the Office of Procurement Operations and Coast Guard are normally the highest volume spenders. CBP kind of, you know, passed Coast Guard this year, um, the last year because of um, border issues and uh, um, 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 things at the border. So that's where a lot of the spend went. Their, their CBP is not normally um, um, higher amount in spend than the Coast Guard. Next slide. FEMA. Now, FEMA is, uh, you know, that's the first thing you think about when there's a disaster. And so FEMA has a lot of uh, pre-position contracts, so it's good for people to understand that. You know, when a disaster occurs, uh, FEMA's also um, in, in, in charge, along with other agencies of the COVID response. Uh, FEMA has a lot of contracts that are already in place. So, you know, when a hurricane hits or something happens, you know, it, those contracts are turned on immediately. They are competed previously. And then, you know, they're depending on how the contracts are set up, there are some competitions when they turn on, when there's a need for them. So don't despair. They're, they're, FEMA is a, a, a well-run um, agency component of DHS, which, uh, you know, no matter who is in leadership it, for any of these, areas, the, 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 the individuals that work in these places um, take pride in what they do and ensure that the mission continues. So, um, and, and FEMA has a lot of uh, um, uh, industry liaison efforts. They have a lot of, uh, you know, information on their website about if you want to be a FEMA contractor. I will say this, you know, you see a lot of, oh, you want to work for FEMA to be a FEMA contractor. You do not have to pay someone to help you to learn about FEMA, okay? So I do see some some ads and, uh, you know, just on the internet about um, working for FEMA, click here, we can help. No, you can go directly to FEMA. You can go directly to the FEMA Small Business Office. You can come to our office if there's any information you want about uh, in regards to FEMA procurements. Uh, TSA, Transportation Security Administration, we all fly, right? So that's one of their, uh, they are the ones that are responsible for security um, coming through the airports. Now, what FEMA, what TSA does not do, they do not run the airports. So airports are, um, you know, uh, the, the, the local municipalities are in charge of the airports. So TSA provides a security screening um, coming into the airport to catch, you know, um, um, airplane. Uh, so we'll go on your trip or what have you. But uh, all security guard services, they buy a lot of IT. What I will say about uh, TSA is that they're trying to get more small businesses into uh, the detection equipment arena. I mean, that has been one area that's been rather hard for them to have small businesses as prime contractors. Uh, there's a lot of related equipment um, uh, that small businesses can provide easily. Uh, but the actual equipment itself has been a challenge. So um, just an FYI, if you have interest in TSA, if you have some kind of innovative, you know, technology about uh, for screening uh, or detection equipment to, that can, you know, 
you know, indicate if there's, you know, some kind of uh, something on someone's hands or you know, they have something, TSA will be welcome to hear anything that a small business has um, created or um, some innovation. Uh, next slide. So before we uh, go to the next slide, ma'am, mm -hmm. we have a couple of questions. Okay. What are some of the largest expenditures by NAICS that are procured by DHS? Uh, well, IT, 541519, depends on what type of IT. So I'll give you, that is one. I'll also say 541519 has a footnote 18, which is value-added resellers for IT products. We have a first source two uh, is our IT products um, contract awarded by DHS. We're about to uh, go out and solicit for first source three, which will be a 10-year contract. Um, I'm not sure what the next codes are for guard services, uh, et cetera. So if you go in 541611, that's the next code for, um, you know, at, uh, consulting administrative services. I'm not quite clear on the title, but I, those are two of the, the, the biggest. And I'll tell you for 541611, uh, which is Oasis has that next code. DHS has a PACS uh, two, one and two uh, contracts that are set aside for service disabled uh, veteran owned small businesses. We are in contemplation and working on PACS three. Uh, which does indeed have that NAICS code and a few others. So those are the major two NAICS codes. Roger that, ma'am. Mm -hmm. The next question, does each of the components like the Coast Guard, Federal Emergency Management Agency, Immigration and Customs, or the Transportation Security Agency have their own small business office? And if so, can you provide some detail on how uh, yeah. our participants can contact them? I will let me go through this and I have that information in the presentation. Roger that. Mm -hmm. uh, another one. We are trying to reach FEMA, small business specialists listed on the website, but unable to reach them. How can, what advice do you have for small businesses that um, I know during these COVID times when uh, the workforce is teleworking and there are challenges with uh, the connection between industry and those small business professionals. Can you talk to what advice you can give uh, our participants on how to reach those small business specialists? If you're having any trouble, and I'll talk about the small business specialists in the, further in the presentation, just you can reach out to my office. Um, I think I have the, our um, generic email address uh, it's listed in the presentation, or I think uh, Destiny uh, may have provided it. Um, I will say, though, that the small business specialist at, now imagine an agency of that uh, component of that size, there's one person who's the small business specialist. So the, the way, and I'll get into how this is all situ, uh, uh, um, constructed, but his name is Robert Danny Keegan, and Danny is very responsive. So I would be shocked that he did not respond to an email that, uh, or an inquiry that you sent. So if there is something that you wanna know about FEMA, um, I can get you in touch with Danny. You can, uh, uh, and I'll just say our uh, general email box is uh, dhsosdbu at hq.dhs.gov. And it's in this presentation, but um, I'll say Danny is one of our stars. And I'll tell you a little bit about Danny. For FEMA. He used to be a, um, I don't know what the title is, but he used to be uh, respond to emergence uh, disasters. I don't know what his what his actual title was, but he went from that to being the small business person and has, has and has done an excellent job. But he knows how FEMA operates. He knows what it is to go out on disasters. So he's very dedicated to FEMA, the organization, to DHS. So if you have any um, any issue with contacting him, that's unusual. And you can just send that email to me, our office, and we'll, we'll get you in touch with him. Thank you. We'll let you get through some more slides. Got some more right. questions, but I'll Okay, so in. that's fine. So real quick, United States Secret Service, you know, we, we all kind of know what Secret Service does. They protect dignitaries, they protect the president, but they're also um, charged with protecting the financial infrastructure of the United States. They again buy a lot of IT, as you can imagine, a lot of communications, special communications equipment and vehicles. 
special special vehicles, not normal vehicles. FLETC is the Federal Law uh, Enforcement Training Center. And what they do is they train federal law uh, 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 um, officials, uh, uh, officers. So it's funny because my brother is a Capitol Hill police officer. And I can remember years ago when he went down to FLETC for training. And it's like, okay, you know, years ago, I'm like, I don't even, I don't know what that is. I, I wasn't working for, you know, there was no Homeland Security then. And so uh, it just was, you know, just, it's kind of, it's, it's weird because now I'm supporting that group. And, you know, he went through the training and I can remember it vividly when he went down there to take um, the training at Fletzy. But again, they have a lot of guard services, lodging and travel. Think about it. They have to feed all the people who come through there. Um, they have to lodge all of the uh, um, students that come through there. Uh, so they have a, uh, they have a smaller budget. They're probably the smallest budget, but they have, a, they do a lot in small business set-asides and, um, um, they, they have an important task in, the uh, um, construct of DHS. So next slide. Now, how does DHS buy? Well, do you want me to stop here? Is it a question? This is another section. We do have a, a few questions. Does DHS only use GSA schedules to compete opportunities? Do you have to complete all any of the work via betasam.gov? Yeah, I, I, and actually, let me get through this slide because I talk about that too. So I hit on all of how we buy. That's actually next. So next slide. Okay, now how does DHS buy, right? We, uh, a bunch of different ways, right? So we use the GSA schedule, yes, of course. We use uh, DHS awarded contracts. We have a huge strategic sourcing program at DHS. We use the best in class contracts. We use other agencies' contracts. Uh, we use if you, uh, OASIS, we use Alliant, we use CLSP3. We use VETS2, we use 8A STARS. Uh, we we have our own, so on the way, performance, you can't uh, issue any awards off. We had Eagle 2. Eagle 2 was similar to uh, Vets 2 or what have you. It was all, um, 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 there were small business functional categories along with unrestricted piece. And we kind of got out of the business of doing these large IT contracts because there's so many to choose from um, and will be like Polaris is coming, 8 a Stars. Three is coming soon. Uh, CISP four is coming soon. So you know we look forward to using those vehicles. Now we'll tell you we do not use vehicles. You know they're different mandates. So you know we we have to um, support small business. That's my charge as the Osdebu, as well as we have to also support category management. And so. Category management does entail use of some of the best in class contracts. Now, we, is that the end all be all? No. It, do we use vehicles that are not uh, conducive to, you know, the right set of, of, of um, um, knowledge that we need? Uh, do they not have socioeconomic categories on it? We don't, we don't use those vehicles. So we pride ourselves on trying to make sure as much as possible that we're using vehicles that have, you know, a wide range of small, large socioeconomic um, companies. We use, we issue uh, requirements through the open market. We, you know, I'm I trying to put websites there too. So beta.sam, I mean, you have to be registered in beta.sam to do business with the government. So if that is something that you, you want to do business with the government, um, you want help with beta.sam, you can, you can reach out to the PTAC. I know, I know Dwight DeNeal was here a, a while ago. Uh, we used to work together. Dwight used to be my, the uh, program manager, uh, director of uh, small business for the Coast Guard, which is one of the components um, that I manage for small business. Uh, unsolicited proposals. Other transaction authority, DHS does have other transaction authority that has to be renewed every fiscal year. We, we use the GSA schedules. We also have a program called Commercial Solutions Opening Pilot Program. Now I believe DOD and GSA have the same authority. And we use this for some of the COVID related, you know, ideas about, uh, you know, th th things change in the last couple of months, how quickly things change. But um, the CSOP is what we call it. And uh, that was used, it's, it's loosely based on the FAR. Um, you can do things very quickly. There are a limit to the contract amount. 
uh, but it brings commercial um, uh, ideas or products to be used quickly um, to the marketplace. And, and CBP also has used the CSOP program to, uh, so to buy some items. And that's why I have the, um, the link there so you can find out more information about that. And these are just, these are the ways we buy. DHS also issues grants. Uh, so we have a large, you know, huge, um, um, various different ways that we uh, purchase. Next slide. So, ma'am, while we're transitioning mm -hmm. to the next slide, I know you can't talk on uh, this platform about specific procurements. We do have a number of questions that are asking about specific procurements. But yeah. uh, what advice is it that you can offer to our participants um, if they have a specific question about a particular uh, procurement that's in yeah, process? If you, yeah, if you have a particular question, either send the email to our mailbox or you can send it directly to me. It may take a couple of days. <laughs> Let's get some of the emails. But the, the, the best thing, we have someone who monitors the mailbox 24, you know, it's not 24 hours, but within a day, you'll get a response. And Great. so you can also actually put subject on there, you know, Department of Navy event, OSDBU event. You know, to, to, so that person who monitors it can tell um, that this was something that Darling wanted sent to the mailbox. So yeah, so if you have any, uh, and, and that kind of ties into this slide here. So DHS has a forecasting, um, our acquisition planning forecast system is called APFS. Uh, some uh, of you may be familiar with it and it's, it's now moved to the cloud. So it has a different uh, uh, website address. So um, the APFS is the systems, electronic system that is used. Uh, so contract, potential contractors can see, well, when is this thing expiring? You know, what is a new requirement? There may be some subcontracting opportunities for me here. You know, main, you know, it's it's where you can see what we think we're going to do, and it's and, you know everything over two hundred fifty thousand, except for a few items like exercise options, et cetera, et cetera. And you can search by NAICS codes, by component, and uh, what have you. So going back to that last question, some of the items that you may be searching for may be in this acquisition planning forecast. If they're active, either if they're active procurements or in here, you can send us an email and we can find out more information. If it's an active procurement, it's limited in information of what we can tell you, as you understand. But if it's something, you know, uh, you know, the department is working on, we can give you status on where it is. And we pride ourselves on being pretty transparent. So next slide, or you want to? While you're uh, transitioning to the next mm -hmm. slide, how accurate uh, is it that you can say that that long range acquisition forecast is? Well, you know what, I, I will say this and I'll go out on a limb and say that I think, uh, and because our system has been copied by a few agencies and I, I wanna say it's one of the best. Now, I will say, are there exceptions often? Indeed. In fact, for example, you may not find some of the COVID related um, requirements in there because they are coded um, with a certain code and the, the um, responsibility, or well, the requirement rather to post them on APFS is not there. It's not required. So very rarely are those instances that way. So most of the time with emergency procurements, there are. Now, um, what we are working on is making sure the information reads as accurate as possible, you know, because you have information flowing from different components, right? One person writes this way, another one writes another way. You know, you'll find that I'll say U.S. Coast Guard probably has really good descriptions of upcoming procurements. So we have a we have a cycle. It's not done willy nilly. I mean, we we do have a date these things are supposed to be in. We have a whole uh, uh, and it's a living document, so it's updated all the time. Sometimes you don't know about the requirement until you know falls on your lap is coming from uh, you know White House. We need you know. DHS to do this, we, you know, we get geared up to do a competition or what have you, that wasn't already planned. So it will be included in APFS. Again, if it's, it's something that has been waived because of emergency, national emergency uh, status. So yeah, we, um, it, it's, it's not, it, we have a lot of information in it. And so it gets probably more and more get added every week or so, even though we'd like as many as possible that uh, October 1st, but you know, I, I, we have a, it's a 
a lot of information. I'll tell you one thing though, we have cleaned it up because we used to put exercise options in there, things like that, that, you know, why would you need to put an option exercise? Only for maybe some contracting, but it's not a new opportunity. Right. So we had to kind of, uh, you know, edit what we put in it to make it a better document. But it does sound like this is a living and breathing. It it's a living document, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Well, yeah, we have a whole team that manages this. It's a whole team that manages APFS. And so it does not go in and stop. It's a living document. You may see something change every day. You can get notifications. Well, it's, the system is different than it used to be. If you know, if you know about the old system, there have been some privacy issues. So now there's a different way that uh, email addresses have to be uh, uh, provided that will give you notifications of when certain NAICS code requirements are posted. Similar to like you know, the oh, I guess Beta Sam does it, but. Uh, uh, um, the old Fed biz ops, <laughs> you know, you, when you put in your next code, it'll, and that's one that you deem to send you information, it'll, uh, it'll send you that. So it is a host of things. You can download it in Excel. You can, you know, search and manipulate it how you want to find uh, what you need. So, mm -hmm. All right. That's all I've got. So, uh, and beta.sam, I mean, everyone should know about that. I mean, you, beta.sam, you have to be uh, registered. Okay, back over to your slides. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Um, again, beta.sam is where DHS posts um, um, RFI information, sources sought, our broad agency announcements, um, which is uh, one of our uh, ways that we award and are uh, aware of R&D uh, innovation. Uh, we post a lot of draft RFPs. DHS does a lot of draft RFPs because we want to know, you know, it's best to learn what you don't know. We, you know, sometimes you don't know everything. How, how really should the cost piece be structured? I'll give you an example. If you go out on um, uh, beta.sam right now, uh, the first source three contract, which is our IT product uh, reseller contract, um, there's a draft RFP that was issued maybe, I think, last week. And the key, the one thing they're asking about is how should the cost uh, evaluation occur? I mean, what, what makes sense? So we issue a lot of those so we can get feedback, so we can make a procurement a little better. We do a lot of innovative uh, things within, um, um, you know, the RFP, RFQ process, as well as the evaluation process. We have a, a, a division within uh, the chief procurement officer called the PIL, Procurement Innovation Lab. And you may see some of their techniques and so forth in, uh, in, in, in some of these solicitations that you see that you may say, oh, uh, that's new. We've never seen that before. So we are all the time trying to evolve and do things faster, quicker, within the rules that we're allowed, um, et cetera. So next slide. Uh, so, you know, one thing to be in tune with is what is DHS buying? How much money do they have? <laughs> You know, what, what are some of the line item areas? You know, who, who, who's getting all the money? Because the money's getting tighter, I'll tell you that. So, um, you know, one first thing to check is what's in the DHS budget. You know, what do we plan on buying? And that's a, a, that's a good link to find out. Again, stressing, registering with Sam. You have to register to do business with the government. Next slide. Okay, DHS and small business. So here we go. The meat of it is, uh, you know, my bailiwick here. Uh, um, so next slide. So I'll talk a little bit about DHS and small business, the construct of DHS procurement. So DHS, like most agencies, has a chief procurement officer, Soraya Correa. Many of you may know Soraya. Um, she, she actually used to be worked together a long time. She used to be my HCA when I was a contracting director at Office of Procurement Operations. Her deputy is Paul Courtney. So you may have seen those uh, names. Now, I just wanted to show you off to the left, right, my right, in the yellow is me. So I actually report to the deputy secretary of the department. Uh, I have a dotted line to Soraya, the CPO, based on uh, administrative support, you know, hiring, et cetera. But the Oslo Blue is not a, a procurement function. 
we are a separate function away from the CPO office. But we're often included in it because, you know, we get our budget from um, the CPO. And I just want to highlight at the bottom, um, the two items, uh, the two, the bluest blocks, so there are 10 of them. So you see OPO, selective acquisition up uh, a little higher. And then at the bottom, you see all of the component contracting officers. So those names are all of the, uh, all of the um, heads of contracting activity. So it's been a while since we had permanent people in, 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 in all of them. You know, we have permanent people in a lot of them at, at once, uh, but this, we have now permanent individuals, no one acting as the HCA for each. I'll just highlight Coast Guard has a new HCA. His name is Keith O'Neill. Um, um, you might be familiar with Mike Darios, who uh, left and went to the State Department. Uh, TSA has a new HCA, Bill Weinberg. You may be familiar with Bill if you've done any work with ICE. He used to be the ICE HCA, and then he retired, and then he came back. Uh, Diane has been at CBP quite a long time, Al Dayton at ICE. Uh, FEMA, Bobby McCain, uh, Secret Service as a new HCA. His name is Sal Saracino. Sal came from USCIS. Uh, he used to work there. Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers, a new gentleman. His name is George Brown. I believe he came from Corps Engineers the uh, last couple of weeks. And Amanda Duquette is the HCA at US Citizenship and Immigration Services. So what is the HCA? That's the head of the contracting activity. They are responsible for the contracting uh, awards, uh, policy, direction at each one of these components. So particularly if you have any interest, issues, concern uh, with anything at one of these components, those individuals can assist you. And at the, the, top, the higher two blue, Office of Procurement Operations, Vicki Short, and Office of Selective Acquisitions, Gary Hickey, they do um, uh, procurements, Classified and non-classified is this office of selective acquisition. So if you have an interest in classified procurements, uh, Gary would be the person to uh, talk with. Next slide. Okay, this is the OSBU organization. Again, the dotted line. Me is the OSBU director. Uh, Quaden Hollis, who just started, she actually, I just stole her from the Coast Guard. And so uh, I was acting in both of these positions for quite some time. So I'm glad that she has now joined us. And so our office actually is uh, a total of 10 people. We have two vacancies. And then you can see what area of expertise each person handles within the office. And so what I do is manage the program from the DHS level. So I manage the entire small business program. Um, and so these 10 individuals, when I get fully staffed, hopefully by this summer, uh, you know, we have a lot of activities that we are participating in, a lot of policy we have to put out, we do a lot of training, uh, just a whole host of things to, to make, this, <laughs> make, this, make this program work at DHS. So next slide. Now, these are the small business specialists, and there's the link to our website or their contact information. Okay, so each component, some only have one, some have several. Coast Guard has several small business specialists. They also have small business uh, contracting people who, you know, have an ancillary duty as small business specialists. Uh, but this is the complete list. Um, you can also check the website at the top. I also added the PCR at the bottom. So if you don't know what the PCR is, the PCR is the Procurement Center Representative, and they work for SBA. So they are involved in, you know, you know, I wouldn't say monitoring, but, you know, assisting DHS, monitoring at some point with comp uh, agent components or no, not components, but federal agencies that aren't, you know, meeting their small business goals, but DHS does. So we don't have that uh, monitoring arm. He's responsible for viewing some contracting plans, for reviewing uh, full and open competition. So I put that in there because it's helpful for businesses to know who the PCR is if you have an assigned PCR specifically for an agency that you're interested in. Because that individual, you know, SBA has a lot of power that people don't <laughs> realize. And so they're the ones, they can see any procurement, small or large, and, you know, and they can question anything. So it's kind of good to know who the PCR is just in case you're, you know, I, you know, I, didn't, I didn't really like that or, or kudos, I really like what DHS did. Let SBA know what we've done. Or you didn't like something, 
you know, it's good to know who the PCR is for each, um, uh, for the agency you're targeting or interested in. So next slide. Okay, and then this is uh, DHS's um, you know, breakdown for 2019. 2020 numbers have not been finalized yet. So I have to go with 2019. So as you can see, in 2019, we awarded about almost 37% of our contracting dollars to small businesses. That was about $6.7 billion. Uh, we awarded about 791 million to HUBZone, which is the hardest to do. Uh, we met that goal. So we met all of our small business goals, uh, the socioeconomic goals last in fiscal year 19. Next slide. So I also wanted to let you know about the scorecard. So SBA every year issues an annual uh, procurement scorecard. It's your report card, you know, for your agency. How is your agency doing with small business uh, as prescribed by the scorecard? And so for the last, as you can see, uh, 11 years, GHS has received an A on the scorecard, an A or better. So we're at four A's in a row, um, A pluses in a row uh, since 2016. And we're expected to get an A fiscal year 20. GHS is the largest agency to have this track record. No one else has this track record at the, for agency our size. And we're, we're pretty proud of that. And we, you know, we take small business very seriously at DHS. Uh, can everything be set aside? No, they look at me and go, you'd like everything to be. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but you know, not really because we want small businesses to be successful. And in some areas you do need, uh, it, it is, it, it may be teaming or large businesses also need to provide the support to the department. So next slide. So ma'am, while we're transitioning to the mm -hmm. next slide, can you talk uh, to how, would a small business go about um, if if they want to meet with your engineers, your technical uh, people that work there, um, so they can do a capabilities brief, or mm -hmm. if they have a solution, some tools, maybe some other contracts via other agencies like DLA uh, to say, here's a, a requirement, um, but here's a tool that you can use, a resource here that can help you award that a little faster? What advice is it that you can give our participants? There? Yeah, what I would say is the list of the small business specialists, they're the boots on the ground. So they're the individuals who actually sit in the procurement office and each one does, uh, you know, they, they kind of design their own thing. So what CBP does may be different from FEMA as far as, you know, some have, uh, they'll pull next codes and have, uh, capability briefings for that day from different companies with that next code or some have their own database where they have uh cbp used to do this i'm not sure if they uh, i think they still do where they'll pull uh you know um you know every company that's interested they have this separate database you know of course with the next code of the item that you know the service or item that they this company can provide so the first thing to do is Figure out which component you're interested in. You know, if it's one, if it's all of them, um, and try to meet with the the small business specialists. I'll get into the vendor outreach in a second. We have that. It's hard to get into vendor outreach because we only do it half a day, and uh, it's very popular. But contacting that small business specialist on the list and reaching out to them and say, "Look, you know, I have this unique idea, or I have something that's being used at Navy." I think would be great for Homeland. And I'd like to come in and do a, 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 a demo, a capability brief, something, not come in now, but do it over the, uh, uh, virtually. Uh, that definitely can happen. They, it happens all the time. All right. And um, understanding that SAM.gov has now been transitioned to betasam.gov, can you talk to what uh, specific agencies within DHS are in need of hub zone requirements? Uh, uh, did I include that slide? Uh, I thought I did. Now, what we do is, um, I'll say all of them, <laughs> but some do better than others. I didn't include that slide. Uh, slide. We don't normally, I mean, the information is in FPS, but we don't use it as a, a slide presentation. I will say all, all, all of them, because 
um, hub zone is the hardest number to reach. It's the hardest set aside. Now what DHS has done is we built contracts like First Source 2, which has a hub zone lane, a functional category, right? So for IT products, so it's like a, you know, it's like a no brainer. We're gonna compete this on the hub zone category for these laptops, I'll just say laptops, uh, with these companies as resellers. And that's how we meet our small business goal. And, that, and that's the strategy that most agencies are trying to adopt. We've been doing it for quite some time, but every component has issues with hub zone. It's when we roll it up, some do better than others. I'll say Coast Guard does a really good job. Uh, um, you know, FEMA probably not so great because you have to understand some of FEMA's procurements are, or the large dollar, the large awards are affecting it because of disaster. So, you know, it, it, all of them, you do, you do yourself a service by reaching out to all of them that may need some hub zone. Um, um, we all need it. Every, and every agency in the federal government does. The federal government never meets its hub zone goal as the rollout. Uh, next up, we have, so I can't stress enough uh, how the P-TACs have been uh, a wealth of resources and mm -hmm. information uh, to help industry navigate uh, the government marketplace. How is it that uh, DHS is uh, collaborating with the P-TACs to um, bring in and help expand that uh, industrial base? Well, you know, we do have PTAC sometimes uh, do presentations for us, particularly, uh, and so does the uh, Small Business Procurement Advisory Council, the um, Osnabu Council. So we partner with them, maybe not in the way that you you may think. Uh, I, we don't normally, or, 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 or might want, uh, we don't normally have them involved in any day-to-day you know, small business function for the department. What we normally do, and I know Dwight Daniel well, who's the head of the, uh, the, the PTAX with DLA, is that we normally refer companies to the PTAX. We do it all the time. Because what we find sometimes is there are companies who, you know, just aren't quite ready to be in this, uh, you know, it, it, it can be quite daunting. And I won't, I won't say that it, well, and I like to be honest, uh, with just, you know, the forms, you know, doing this, you know, the requirements, you know, cost system, everything. So when, you know, a company comes in and we know, you know, maybe one or two people and they're just trying to figure some things out, you know, we talk to them about everything. But we often, all the time, uh, depending on their state where they live, refer them to the PTAC. So they can just get more information. You know, we, we, we applaud what the PTAC does. So we do use them. We do refer companies to them quite often on a regular basis. So I know we, we speak at we speak at PTAC events about DHS procurements. It's all the, yeah, we do we do a lot. Great. Mm -hmm. So we have about ten minutes left. I know you still have some slides you want. Yeah, to let get. me just go. Yeah, let but me. I, I like the questions, but let me just. You can just go, yeah. Destiny. Can you just go through? Let me tell you what slide to go to because we'll just take all of that out. Um, we kind of talked about category management. We don't need to get into that strategic sourcing. Let's go down to slide uh, 29. Okay, so 29 would be uh, a DHS department-wide contracts. If you have an interest in uh, what it is the DHS buys in the strategic sourcing realm, also what's in process. Uh, if you're interested in also strategic sourcing office, it may be a good place to look up ooh, who's won these contracts. Maybe I can get some subcontracting opportunities or I can team with someone on some of these procurements. So next slide. Key source, yeah, this is another key resources for small business. So here is our email <laughs> box. Um, this is information about our Osnabu staff, um, the component small business specialists. I just try to put everything in this one. And now vendor outreach really quick. So what DHS does 10 months out of the fiscal year, we have, we used to have it at 90K Street and, you know, companies would come in and hopefully some of the companies on here had at least been able to attend vendor outreach. So now we do it virtually. So we still have VOS. Uh, for instance, this month is uh, uh, Women's History Month. So uh, the virtual VOS attendees are women-owned or economically disadvantaged business-owned um, companies. 
Uh, so, um, and we have, if you go to that link, you can see how to register for VOS and et cetera. I mean, the appointments still, still go very quickly. Uh, we've tried to figure out a way to expand it, even though uh, it may be a little easier virtually expanding it or doing it more than once a month. But right now we still do it. Uh, we 10 months out of the year, we do not do VOS in April or September. Okay. So next slide. Really quick, I want to just, um, and I guess these slides are available. Uh, our beast, right? Will be available. Yes, to and these slides will be posted okay. on our website along with the recording of this. Uh, okay, web. good. Okay, so I want to highlight this for all you companies that are innovative, R&D. DHS has a, a program called the Silicon Valley Innovation uh, Program, which is out of our science and technology directorate. So I've put some links there about S and T, the, uh, some of the long range um, uh, um, BAA um, announcements. Um, let me see. I think I also have some upcoming S and T events. You can see that is the second link from the top. So it gives you more information about their, our, our science and technology. Um, um, that's always a big question about what does DH as DHS do with innovation, we do a lot. And so you have to, you have to be ever changing when you're trying to draw off of uh, 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 harm that can come to the country. So you have to be innovative. We have to, we have to stay on this top of technology. The next slide talks about the SBIR program. I have the slides here too. So our small business innovation research program, DHS has SBIR program. We do not have an STTR program. And so this um, slide gives you a little more information about our small business innovation research program. The, I don't know if I added it, but the program manager, and you'll see it if you um, go on our website about science and technology. Her name is Dusty Lang, L-A-N-G. Her first name is Dusty, D-U-S-T-Y. She is the small business program manager for uh, uh, the SBIR program. And she is, uh, she's uh, an expert in it and she can tell you a lot about uh, SBIR, the phases, how it works. Uh, and um, and she, she, she's very responsive. So you reach out to her, uh, just, you know, um, you click on the link, I believe it may come up with her information. I'm not sure about that link, but her name is Dusty Lang. You need any information, just um, her contact information, let me know, but it's on the website. Uh, let, uh, we can go past uh, the next one, unsolicited proposals. Everybody should know that, teaming. Really quick, slide 36. DHS has a mentor-protege program. Uh, and we also um, uh, encourage you to be part of SBA's All Smart Mentor Protege Program. Learn more information about that. Uh, the next slide talks about DHS's Mentor Protege Program. Uh, our program differs from SBA's. We don't have joint venture feature. Um, our the protege must be a large. I um, mean, the mentor must be a large company. Um, you know, we have a submission process. The the it, the uh, Program manager for our program, her name is Sharon Davis. There's a link at the bottom if you want more information about the DHS uh, Mentor Protege Program. Let me see. Uh, let me just go to slide number 41. Yeah, so these are just, um, this will just tell you some of the things that DHS does, you know, entry points. How can you get in contact with DHS? We have an industry liaison program. That was the slide previous. So you'll have these slides so you'll be able to see it. We do one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, vendor outreach, which I already talked about. We do industry days about specific procurements. Uh, we have annual strategic industry conversations, which discuss large DHS programs. Um, those are events that uh, senior leadership attend. Uh, usually uh, uh, the deputy secretary of the USM will be a part of that. Uh, we issue RFI so we can find out, you know, try to do the best market research that we can. Um, and we have an industry, that industry calendar link, I don't think it's been updated for 21. But if you go on that link, uh, I don't know how far it goes back. I know to the, it, it shows, and you click on the, the year, it shows all the industry events that we've had. And you can see, you know, the large range of different e events that we um, have had. Um, we have something called reverse industry days. We have the strategic industry conversations. 
We have acquisition innovation roundtables. So you can go in and see, okay, this is some of the activity DHS is doing to talk to industry. Um, our CPO has a, a, a monthly, it, used, it, it started out as I think every week when COVID first hit about small businesses getting information about what's happening, what's going on with some of, you know, how, how's these, how is this affecting contracts? We now have that meeting every month. And so a lot of the associations do attend that meeting and ask questions of Paul and Sarai. So I think uh, since our time is running out, yeah. And then this key takeaway is the last slide, but you all have these slides, so you can look at it. We'll share them, but we do have one question. We've got a number okay. of, we got a few minutes, but okay. this, um, it, it looks like a number of people are having, I apologize, let me turn my camera on. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh, are having difficulty getting, uh, being able to attend your monthly updates. Yeah. So how yeah. do they go about it? How can you help them uh, so that they can secure a slot? Yeah, well, it, well, you know, it, I, I wish it was easy as give me five dollars. That's not. <laughs> that's not how it's done. I mean, it it we it, we have a organized system where we have a company that uh, we worked on this for quite some time, who you know, you, you, that does the scheduling, and so it's it's all a, a matter of who can get there first. We understand that can be frustrating. So one of the things that, you know, it, it was, it's a hard day when we used to do it uh, in-house, you know, you know, at the location. And, you know, our recent hour was talking about this a few minutes before we started uh, was, you know, now this is a little better virtually because, you know, you can just, you know, you don't have to go anywhere. You can just turn on the computer. So that is one of the things that we are thinking about is doing uh, VOS, uh, maybe, more than once or maybe the entire day instead of just half a day because we do a half a day. The other thing we've been thinking about is an expanded VOS or a expanded outreach. A lot of times we have these events like this that I'm, I'm glad to come to and welcome to, to be invited. But um, we want to do a, a, I don't know, like a VOS on steroids kind of where we, we you know, where it's, it's open to, DHS is sponsoring it. And it's open to whoever wants to attend. Small or large, small is my focus, but you know, I wouldn't stop who could can attend just to hear me talk about this kind of thing, maybe for even longer than this, you know, uh, and, and not be tied to VOS. Have program people come in and talk, you know, highlighting some of the components and those offices. Highlight the office in FEMA that's responsible for X. Highlight S and T. Um, and I'll tell you also, if you're interested in S&T, they do have a weekly, if you go to their website, they do a weekly uh, update about what they're doing, like a weekly webinar. Also, if you're interested in science and technology direct. But so that's that's the plan. So I, I get it. We just kind of, you know, we were thinking about doing an expanded day in-house. And, you know, they were grumbling because they're like, it's it's tiring. I'll tell you, it's tiring kind of to talk to people all day. I mean, if you you know, when you go up and give a speech, you're like, oh, train. But when you're talking to different people all day long, it can be tiring, and I understand that. So we, we, we're in person. So it may be easier if we did it like twice a month, half a day, or, um, or even expand and not limit it to 10 months a year and just do a 12-month. Right. Because uh, right. now we've already, and we had a reason why we did that in April, because there used to be this large, you remember the, the, the procurement conference at the, uh, uh, they moved it to convention center. So we all yeah. will be there. So since that's kind of changed. So all of this creates a change in how we do everything. And right. so we are looking at that. And I apologize for, for if you aren't able to get in, but you know, we, we just have made a system that's very fair. To all right. So what I will offer to you is the opportunity, if you would like to use this platform in this form with these, yeah. uh, with the audience that we have, if you yeah. want to bring back the program folks, and we do uh, a session and we can um, build that into our schedule. So oh, I will yeah. see you. But I'd like to say thank you for your time today. Those thank questions you. that we were not able to go to, Ms. Bullock has provided her uh, general email box. Please yeah. email her directly. Um, and all of her slides will be made available along with this recording. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, please email me and I will respond if you have any questions I didn't answer. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Stay safe. And until I believe next week, we have a USAID next week. So please come back and join us. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Bye -bye.